I also stream games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash chrisware. Hi folks, so today I would like to share with you an open source tool which I'm sure many of you already know. It's called CodyMD. It's a self-hosted uh, open source piece of software that allows you to collaborate on documents, uh, but it has a markdown focus. So uh, for those of you that don't know what markdown is, I'm sure many of you are, it is a way of writing a plain text document so that um, it can be picked up with like headings and table formatting, bullet points and all that kind of thing. And I'll sort of demonstrate it as I go through this video, but it's a really simple way to do uh, sort of basic word processing and to be honest in my experience and I do quite a lot of word processing in my day-to-day -day life word processing for the majority of the time for the overwhelming majority of the time of the overwhelming majority of people is quite simple uh, and it's really straightforward and it's really versatile like back in the old days you would do word processing for the purposes of, of a document being printed out and that's kind of straightforward in its own way like LibreOffice is pretty good for that Microsoft Word or I mean even if you want to go down that you know the, the, the particular direction Google Docs isn't bad for it or even uh, at, at, at my work we have the option of using the Microsoft Office Cloud uh, suite of tools I think it's Office 360 or something called something like that and that's not bad like as far as tools go for word processing in that kind of environment it's it's fine like it does the job it's easy it's straightforward and by and large in my personal philosophy is as much as i like uh, open source software and uh, and 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 you know this kind of stuff um when i'm on the company dime as they say um i'm happy to use the company tools like it's not something like i sometimes they make it well sometimes we're, we're in a position where we have to use macs i really do not like macs and the more i use them the more i dislike them i really do not like <laughs> i really do not like them uh, just on a on a day-to-day -day usability uh, standpoint um but then again you know if it's not my responsibility it's the it department's responsibility in that regard so when it comes to sort of personal things or projects I'm uh, involved with because I want to be involved with them and I, you know, or, or situations where I get to choose the software I use, then something like CodyMD is something really useful and something that I think uh, allows word processing to be a lot more versatile. So without further ado, this is CodyMD installed on the Snopatar server, uh, snopatar.org. And it's a wonderful, if any of you folks... Um, uh, are uh, familiar with Snopatar and and the the great stuff that they do, the great open source services they provide. It is always worth dropping them a donation. Um, I do mention them a few times on this channel, and if you are particularly enthusiastic about uh, putting some financial support behind some really good open source communities, then Snopatar is would is is should be pretty pretty close to the top of your list, or certainly would be very close to the top of mine. Um, and I I, I do do uh, I do donate to them from time to time. They have, um, I think they have a a, a Libra Pay. I'll um, I'll put some details. I'll put some links to what well, they have. Libra Pay is I think how I donate to them, and Libra Pay is really good because that's also open source. Anyway, I'll put some links to how you can support Snopatar down in the description below because they do deserve. Um, you know the the support of, of the community that they are such a um strong foundation for but anyway that aside uh, you can sign in using a snopatar account that you sign up for and then you can actually just save your notes there in the cloud you know just like google docs but better and more ethical but i'm just going to use a guest note for the purposes of today because i don't want to necessarily put all of my personal notes here on on the internet and um it actually starts you in in the light themed mode but i always it's like the first thing i do go into dark mode it's a lovely beautiful theme and what you've got here is you've got a split window and it's very simple so if i wanted to do a very basic word document i would just do um hashtag or hash pound sign whatever you want to call it uh heading and then i just do t uh, you know two uh two new lines and then do hello this is paragraph one uh, and then I can do bullet points here so I can either use uh, bullet point uh, I can do this or and then it, it goes through and do bullet bullet point two uh, paragraph that's not how you spell paragraph Typing, typing uh, on 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 video is weirdly unnerving, actually. Uh, okay, so because that's also not how you spell paragraph, I'm going to put group of words. 
group of words too. Like so. And then you can also do bullet points like this. Bullet point two. Uh, and then group of words three. And then you can do numbered. Numbered list. And then numbered list. Okay. And it does all this automatically. And what you can do, for example, is you can do that and then you can just press the tab key and then it, do it dots you in where you can then start your numbered list again. And it's as simple as that. So you've got, oh, sorry, I knocked the mic there. Uh, so you've got, a, a, you know, all the basic options there. You can actually do tables. Tables are a little bit more uh, interesting, I'll say, where, um, so for example, you might do um, pipe H1, pipe H2, pipe H3, pipe. You can actually put, oh, put some spaces in there just to make it a bit more human readable. Then you've got to do, um, I think this is how it goes. There we go. And then T1, T2, this is just, you know, pointless data, T3. And you can then sort of adjust as necessary. Uh, so there we go. Um, and, and what you end, fundamentally end up with is you have a plain text document on the left hand side and this and on the right hand side you have what is effectively uh, what that plain document is is converted into i can actually make the uh, i believe i can sort of make it all a touch bigger if that's a bit easier i should have done that at the beginning of the video but such is life um, but there we go so as you can see there heading on the left hand side uh, paragraphs uh, bullet pointed text and that's to be honest in most cases um e uh, you know what you need in, in in most forms of word processing you can even do for example you can do links as well so um this the the buttons at the top here they provide you with uh sort of frameworks as you know you know like uh, examples and all this kind of stuff so for example if i wanted to do a link is that the link one yeah so there we go so it gives me like the framework so i can do this will be link one and then i can do this to uh duck duck Go.com, just as an example, and there you go. You can click on link one, and it'll actually take you to Duck Duck Duck, duck Go, and there we go. Duck Duck Go, just as the first website that came to mind, really. And there we go. So you can actually add links quite easily into a word processing document, and um, and it's as, as you said, there are a few other bits and pieces here. But uh, so, for example, if you wanted to make this word bold, uh, you just simply use two asterisks either side of it. If you wanted to make it italic. It's one asterisk, and you can see all how of that how that is rendered on the right hand side. What is nice is that it is rendered uh, as you know for the device that it's on. So uh, it means that word processing works better on, for example, a mobile interface. So you will uh, draft out your document, then it will go. Then uh, because that's one of the things I come across is that nowadays we don't just print our documents. That's not the standard paradigm from which documents are processed. Um, sometimes people like to print out documents. I often quite like to print out documents, but it is a waste of paper. And actually, nowadays, not that many people have printers. Um, so that's that's something that's worth, worth bearing in mind. So you might want to actually make your word processing documents um, suitable for uh, for small small screen devices like phones, where someone can pull pull up a, um, a a document like this, and it's you know just as easy to read on a small screen as it is to read on a big screen. It's got that versatility, and that's really good. I really quite like that. Also, another thing about it is that when you save uh, markdown documents, they're actually really small in file size. Now, nowadays, where disk space is incredibly cheap, it's, it's really um, less of an issue than it was. However, one of the things I always say about free and open source uh, server software and, you know, on desktop software as well, but server software is it's got to be accessible to people who don't have lots of money or to uh, people that want to host for, you know, like a community of people like, for example, what Snopatar are doing. And you need to keep your file sizes small in that regard because it makes them portable. You can attach them to emails more easily. You can save the, you know, save them more easily. You can archive them more easily. Uh, it's easier to back up. It's just it's just easier across the you know in all kind of ways that you probably won't even sort of anticipate or expect. 
Um, it's also a very simple way of keeping the file size down. You can use any number of pieces of software to open a markdown document, and even many text editors like Pluma, um, Gedit, and all these kind of things, they will color code uh, markdown documents like you see on the left hand side here where the heading is orange text is gray um, then the bullet points are, are blue uh, the links are, you know the, the link text is in green so it makes it a lot more easier to read even without proper um, formatting like you see on the right hand side of the screen here um, so yeah you know like markdown can be rendered in any number of ways that suits the end user it's really easy to save uh, it's easy, of course, to include in um, documents as well. So what would I do, for example, if I wanted to include this document here into, you know, how would I want to send it some? What's the best way of sending it? Would I send it to them as a PDF? Well, that's got its pros and cons. A PDF is a fixed format. It's, uh, it's, it's going back to the issue that I had before, where not everyone has printers. So if you give everyone a A4 or letter size uh, PDF. That's not going to look good on, on mobile phones. So how do you allow for that kind of flexibility? Well, HTML file. Well, you can use an HTML file. And in fact, if you click publish, I think it is. Oh no, if you click publish, it will give you a link that you can use right here. So this is a link. You can actually pr provide a link to people. Um, and it's, uh, and, and, and there you go. That's like one way. You can just put the link straight into the uh, the email itself and it'll provide you with an already formatted. People can print that out if they want to. They can just look it on the screen. Um, what you can do is, for example, I'm making the text really big here to sort of simulate what, what it might look like on a, a mobile screen here. Um, so the text wraps nicely. You still, the links will work, that kind of stuff. That's all good. Uh, but what else can you do? You can go to menu. Uh, you can download it as you can download it as Markdown. Downloading it as Markdown is basically just downloading it as a plain text file. You can download it as HTML, which is downloading the what you just saw, which was which was what happens when you click the publish button. So you download you can download the HTML. So you download this page as an HTML file, and you can send that. You can attach it to an email or anything like that. But what I like to do when it comes to sending documents uh, is is not actually to bother with attachments at all. I like to get the raw HTML. Um, I will have to open it. Uh, right, what I'm going to do, this is going to be a bit clunky because it's opening up in another browser window. Uh, so I'm going to just take this across here into my LibreWolf browser. There we go. Okay. So what I've got here, this is the raw HTML that, um, that has been uh, provided to me in a uh, file by, uh, by just downloading it there. Uh, if, to, um, if, LibreWolf was my main browser. It would just open it up in a new tab, but I use LibreWolf, of course, for doing these kind of videos because it's, you know, a step. It's, it's like a blank browser, blank slate in that regard. But anyway, so I've got the raw HTML here. What I then tend to do, I just tend to select it, copy, paste into an HTML email. Now, I usually do my emails plain text like any civilized individual should, but if I do feel the need for formatting, like like my, my philosophy is default should always be plain text. It's easier, it's simple. Always keep it simple when you've got the preference to do so. However, if I want to include what is effectively a, a word processing document in a plain text format, uh, in, in a, if I want to include a, a document in an email, I much prefer to include it as uh, HTML inside of the email itself rather than attach it. I always have people have problems with attachments. If it's a dot .doc, it, it upsets people who have, I don't know, who don't have word or whatever like there's always someone that is always someone that doesn't have the right piece of software for any given piece i we just does, don't seem to have settled on this as a society at the moment um and i don't necessarily feel comfortable just attaching an html document to someone who doesn't really know much about computers because they might not ne necessarily recognize the file format even though of course it's a web page so the most easiest and straightforward way of dealing particularly with non-technical users is just to copy paste the raw HTML straight into the uh, into the email itself uh, in a, obviously a rich text email. And that gives me zero issues. And it also provides me with all of the benefits of 
uh, markdown in and of itself, even though it's been converted into HTML. But it allows people, they can, people can print out their emails. They obviously know how to do that. And people can obviously, obviously view their emails on their phone. And it provides, it provides that amazing versatility because it's closer to plain text. The closer something is to plain text, the easier it is to manipulate in all various different kinds of ways for all various different kinds of people. It's better for people on screen readers. It's better for people on Braille terminals. It's better for all kinds of people with accessibility issues. Because it's not themed, it's better for people who might be colorblind. It's better for people who might be dyslexic and need a particular font or need a particular font size. All of this stuff can be catered for with things like Markdown, which you cannot cater for with PDF. With PDFs, when I used to do word processing and I did them with PDFs, I had to have a whole philosophy around how I was going to lay out a document so that it was most accessible to the most number of people. And while I felt like I was pretty good at this kind of thing, uh, that people who, who might not have had the best eyesight, you know, so I, I had good size font, very readable fonts, um, you know, high contrast on screens, all this kind of stuff. Very, very important. Always important. Being able just to provide plain text so that people's default setups on their computers or on their devices or on paper uh, works out of the box, no configuration required, is something that's really uh, useful. And at the end of the day, all you've got to do to achieve that is keep it all simple. That's my uh, that's my take on it. So going back to Kodi MD, which is a wonderful piece of software, but there are many others like it. Um, it does it's just one tool of many you can you can actually just go ahead and use markdown in a in in you know gedit or in pluma and it works or you know pretty much as well there now with something like code md you do have that side by side comparison you can also choose to view the document just as is here or you can choose just to go straight into editing mode you don't have to have the side by side sometimes if i'm just focusing on on writing something i'll just go straight into to the, the, the editing mode and it's fine and sometimes like if you don't like bigger headings sometimes if you do like the the distinction between the various different types of text as colors rather than things like sizes then sometimes and you know i do find it easier to to you know work with the uh, with the color coding as well also just kind of nice I mean, it's just visually interesting and i think it and i i like monospace fonts as well um and then of course um with code emd as well uh, i don't think i can demonstrate that here but you can actually back up all of your documents into a quick uh zip file just download that and it's all saved fundamentally in plain text because markdown is just a, a way of formatting plain text that's that's it you are looking at the plain text version of it you can copy and paste it you can save it as a file you can attach you know you can just copy and paste it into an email you can attach it to an email uh you can turn it into a website you can publish it as a website you've got all of these amazing options uh to you and it all stems from from keeping something simple, you know, and, and not over-engineering a solution, um, which is sort of converse to how we're seeing websites and, and the World Wide Web go now, which has just become more, more and more convoluted to do the same job that we were doing over 20 years ago. Kind of ridiculous. So I like that Markdown is a, a bit of a rebellion against that. Uh, I like that it's in common usage, particularly among tech tech people, but I would like to see it gain some degree of traction among non-technical users. Like, it's not difficult. In fact, to be honest, to do an asterisk and then start a bullet point, to do a, just to push uh, a hashtag sign and then do a heading, that to me is a lot more easier to do, more user-friendly, more comfortable. Instead of, you know, moving from keyboard to mouse to keyboard to mouse, to have just a keyboard, I mean, it's a short keyboard shortcut of type, uh, of types, but, you know, it, it just feels comfortable that you can actually just draft out a whole document with your hands never leaving the keyboard. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not formatting this. You're not formatting that with, you know, with your mouse or anything like that. You know, you're, you're fundamentally using one tool for one job rather than using the keyboard and the mouse. You're using two, two tools to do one rather simple job. So um, I just thought that <laughs> this is a subject that might deserve a ramble. Like I say, Kodi MD, great piece of software. Um, but there are others that are uh, that are quite like it. Um, there is like a, a slideshow mode. I've never actually used that. Um, the source code is available. It's available on GitHub. They do have a Mastodon and a Riot Room, which I probably am in. Um, but yeah, do I have a history here? Uh, no, because I'm not signed in as I understand it. But uh, yeah, Kodi MD, wonderful piece of software. Uh, you can self-host it uh, yourself, um, but there are many, many places on, on the internet that have um, a, uh, a, a installation of uh, of Code MD, and 
yeah you know markdown it's it's sort of it's, it's reinvigorated my love for markdown because it just embraces that philosophy of of not over engineering stuff keeping it simple when it needs to be and um and and that the versatility that comes from all of that so anyway that's about it for me today thank you guys very much for watching a pleasure as always and until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome totally if you'd like to support the content on this channel i have a libra pay account it's like patreon but open source